It's Bullseye. I'm Jesse Thorne. A heads up before we get into this episode. Uh, there is some talk in this interview about sexual assault, which is one of the subjects of the comedy TV show, Norseman, which we're about to talk about. There's nothing graphic, but there is discussion of how it is used in comedy in, in a sort of abstract sense. So if that's a sensitive subject for you, uh, be aware that it, it does come up. Anyway, my guests, the creators of the TV show, Norseman, John Ivor Helgaker and Jonas Torgerson. Have you heard of Norseman? I have been watching a lot of it lately. It is very funny. The premise is pretty simple. Basically so simple you can sum it up in two words, funny Vikings. But it's not like goofy or anything. In fact, it's entirely deadpan. It's set around the year 790 AD. It's filmed in the wilderness of Norway, shot simultaneously in English and Norwegian. They wrote it in Norwegian and translated it to English and made the same actors do it in both languages. The Vikings on the show pillage, they fight amongst themselves, they sacrifice slaves. They also argue about, I guess you might say, boardroom stuff, only it's about who's going to be in charge of the village. At one point, they decide to make their village a cultural capital by building a monumental art piece. It has some of the absurdity of Monty Python, but it is played as dry as a bone, like... Maybe The Office or something like that. The violence, though, is brutally real, like Game of Thrones real. And the production values are actually pretty impressive. At the heart of the show is the fact that they can see modernity right over the horizon, a new way of doing things. Basically, pillaging villages, getting into longboats and murdering a bunch of northern English people doesn't pay like it used to. And, you know, there's squabbles between the clans and villages. And you know what this is like. Sacrificing slaves just wasn't always so complicated, you know? Wait, wait just yes. a second. Uh, not to cock up your plans or anything, but are you 100% certain it, that it's necessary to sacrifice me? Yes, I am. I mean, ritual sacrifice isn't a perfect science, but I feel really confident about this one. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, you've sacrificed two slaves already. Uh, you're not worried that the gods are going to think that you're trying too hard, that it's too much? Mm, I really like the way you're thinking. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great that you as a slave bother getting involved, but... Thank you. If you don't mind, I think we just move on. Okay, okay. Oh, yes. of course. Yes. I thought I'd mention it. I mean, yeah. no point in regretting it later. I mean, sacrifice isn't exactly reversible, is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Odin, thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, welcome to Bullseye. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you for thank having you. us. Um, were you intimidated at the prospect of making jokes in the context of mass murder? Uh, I mean, the things that the Vikings did? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We haven't gotten that many reactions, really, because we were probably... Uh, or we have made jokes about uh, pillaging, raping, and homosexuality. You know, yeah, but uh, everything. everything is, yeah. But everything is based on reality in the Viking Age. So we haven't like uh, our take on homosexuality. You were, it was not. Uh, um, there were laws. Yeah, here. there were laws. That was you have. If you were the active part, you were uh, you were the. You, you, uh, that was illegal. No, the well, active part was legal. Yeah, so just they had this uh, when we, when we found we found that and we found a lot of stuff. If, you, if you're allowed to get divorced, how, you know, a lot of facts you, you, we could base our the whole uh, you know script around and like Holm Gang, the way he uh, that was that was a law you could like go over to somebody and say I challenge you and then <laughs> yeah then I mean you were <laughs> yeah. feeling for the sake of our radio yeah. audience when you said where he. Uh, uh, you were making a chopped a man in half gesture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a plot point right at the beginning of the first season where um, one of the characters is coming back from a big, you know, uh, uh, pillaging adventure overseas. Mm -hmm. 
and is kind of regretting that he doesn't feel like he has a home or a, a settled life when he comes back from this thing that he's so good at. Mm. Um, and someone tells me, you know, you should really have some ambition in, at home as well as overseas. And and he so he decides to challenge the guy with the biggest farm to a fight to the death so that he can take his farm and wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's loosely yeah. based on like reality, but that was that was in sort, theory yeah. that's something yeah. you could do. So I don't know if anyone uh, anyone did that, but in theory that's uh, that was that was the law. So so we we like finding these kind of nuggets that we can use uh, mm. on the series and yeah, and that's uh, it's pretty funny yeah. though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's <laughs> yeah. let's actually I, I we have a clip from the home gun. Uh, section of the show so uh basically this guy arvid the guy who is so good at pillaging uh, has come back and he challenges a man named olvar who's the biggest farmer in town to a home gong which is this ritual fight to the death and let's listen in what <laughs> home gong Yes, and then the winner can uh, take over the loser's uh, property and, and wife and, and stuff. Because that's how the rules are, isn't it, Olav? Have I achieved Olav? That's right, what you say there is right. But you don't own anything, Arvid. Uh, but uh, that's how the rules are, and it would be stupid of me not to take advantage of it. But I built up everything with my own hands from nothing. Yeah, and I really respect you for that. But still, I, Arvid, hereby challenge Olvar to a uh, home gun. <laughs> There's something about <laughs> Arvid's incredible skill at murdering yeah. uh, and the contrast with his sort of sweet disposition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's a little bit of a he's shy and he's. You know, he's... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. It's been, and also just playing with that. Arvid would probably be the worst modern person. Yeah, but he's the best Viking person, and Orm is probably the best modern man. Right, and it's it's just fun to take that period of time seriously and and use those characters for just turn it around and making them like they are modern people in this. I don't know. Medieval world. Yeah, there yeah. are modern people in the medieval world, and and they are just stuck with the, in the boundaries of of the Viking Age. I think that's it's a lot of fun. The jokes in the show are as brutal as uh, in any comedy show I've ever watched. Um, there's really intense graphic violence. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of jokes about rape. Did you think about how you wanted to do that when you decided to make a show about a world where those things were common realities? It's to find what's funny in those angles. I mean, we we had to address rape and we had to address pillage and we had to address murder and brutality because if not we were not making a Viking show I mean if we we're gonna meet on some common ground of, of what you know about Vikings that that needed to be addressed all the way so the question was really how to make it funny and I think we one of the first things we wrote was uh, when they come back in first episode they come back from uh, pillaging and uh, our warrior goddess Freya is there, and uh, Orm comes up, and 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 she has been raping uh, on this trip, and she's bragging about that, and he, he, her her husband is like, "Was that necessary?" Yeah, and she's like, "Of course, that's what you do when you're out pillaging. What what do you expect?" So I mean, if you turn it around, it wouldn't be funny if it was a guy saying it. It would it works because she's saying it. You know, it's. Yeah. Um, I was shocked to learn how successful the show is in Norway, not because I didn't think it deserved to be successful, mm -hmm. um, but simply because that level of intensity is something that is not for everyone. And it's a show that's being watched by something like, I don't know, it was like a third or half of Norway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, is that, are the, are the comedy conditions that different in Norway? I think so. 
I think so. No one ever reacted to any of the pillage and raping jokes, really, in Norway. No, I don't I think. think it was. We we thought it's we would a, get a lot more uh, yeah. attention for that, and uh, to be, we were like when we were filming it, we were like, we're gonna have to sit in a in a panel somewhere to to answer for this somewhere along the line. Mm. But you know, it's, it's a part. Of, I think it's because the whole package is is uh, what it is, and it wouldn't work in a modern show at all, of course because it's not really funny at all but it's it's just uh, the absurdity and the uh, our goal was to take that viking age seriously and do it properly and and since all the graphic violence is because if we made that funny like uh, Monty Python funny where he chops off the legs and he's still fighting on it that would be a completely different show so what we said to the costume designers and to the set designers and to everyone is that Everything has to look like we're doing Game of Thrones or Vikings. That's the premise for everything. Because if it doesn't look like that, none of the jokes will work. We'll finish up with John and Jonas, the writers of Norsemen, in just a bit. After a quick break, did you know that at one point skateboarding was illegal in Norway? Neither did I. Tales of skateboard smuggling, coming up on Bullseye from MaximumFun.org and NPR. This message comes from NPR sponsor Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build an online presence and run your business. Create your company's website using customizable layouts along with features including e-commerce functionality and mobile editing. And Squarespace offers built-in search engine optimization. Go to squarespace.com NPR for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code NPR to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Julia Furlan here. Don't miss my chat with Greta Lee. You know her from Russian Doll. Sweet birthday baby. Sweet birthday baby. Sweet birthday baby. We talk about New York comedy and fashion and her own HBO deal. That's this week on It's Been a Minute from NPR. It's Bullseye. I'm Jesse Thorne. I'm here with Jonas Torgerson and John Ivor Helgaker. They created and run the Norwegian TV show Norsemen. It's a bone-dry sitcom set in the Viking Age. You can watch it now on Netflix. Let's hear another scene from a uh, Norseman. So uh, a character named Orm is filling in as chieftain while his brother Olaf is away on raids. And Orm is kind of a joke to the other villagers. Um, he's sort of, he's a, just a little dopey, and he's very bad at being a Viking, like killing and stuff. Uh, he's also he's in, either in love with the arts or in love with the idea of being in love with the arts, maybe. So uh, Orm's brother and the, and the whole crew have come back from this big raiding trip. They're going to have a big celebration and a reunion uh, after the pillaging. And Orm says maybe that everybody should drink some mead at his place before heading out to the party, like a pre-party get-together thing. And uh, everybody else is ambivalent at best about the prospect. Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, all of us from the boat kind of agreed to get together before the party. Yeah. Oh. Pour out some meat for our dead comrades and reminisce and stuff. Reminisce? Mm. We just got home a few moments ago. We're not going to reminisce about the last moments on the boat. We're going to reminisce about when we first got there, uh, the first monastery pillaged and stuff. I understand. But it couldn't hurt if I was a fly on the wall, could it? You know, I can even bring my own chair because you always say that there aren't enough seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I think. I think it would be very crowded if yeah. people start bringing their own chairs. Mm. Uh, yes, yes, no, but I understand. But I, I can, I can, I can, I can stand outside, uh, you know, and just talk to the guys who go to the toilet and stuff like that. That yeah. would be okay, wouldn't it? I think maybe I heard someone say three, two, one. No one else can come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was yeah. Ragnar. Yeah. 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 But that's yeah. not ruined in stone, is it? A stone, a stone. Uh, you have to respect it, or else it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> that is so stupid. <laughs> That's very stupid, yeah. <laughs> but it's a very, like, I mean, of course they did stuff like that, yeah. you know? Kept people out. And it's an old Norwegian rhyme. 
No yeah. one knows where one is from. Yeah. Maybe it's from the Viking Age. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that also is that also is an example of something that has obviously been translated from Norwegian into English for the English language version yeah. of the show. It really has no meaning to us. <laughs> Three, two, <laughs> one. No, no one else can come. I mean, it means. Yeah, I mean, I get what it is. <laughs> it means exactly that. <laughs> it's just when you're you're at school and you're dividing up the football teams, and that's you know that's the end of it. <laughs> um, Orm's character, you you referred to the weird laws in Viking times about homosexuality. Orm's character is uh, rather desperately closeted. Yeah, well, um, we we're not, we're not sure yet. I mean, he's he's uh, he's open for everything. He's just open for life, and I think mostly Orm is about he's lonely and he's been left out all his life, so he doesn't really know anything. That's kind of the, our take on it. So he, he <laughs> you agree? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he'll take anything that comes along. Yeah, really, if. Um, uh, and not yeah. just like in a sexual way. Every everyone that shows him some kind of kindness, he's on board with that. He's on board with that at once because he's in desperate lack of of being included. Really, were you worried about making a uh, the character who's hiding gay pornography be that pathetic? Like there are times late in the first season where I was like, I'm. I think these guys are making fun of the homophobia of. Viking times, but also times when I thought, like, God, this guy's so pathetic that I, and he's also so, like, he doesn't have the qualities that the Vikings value of masculinity and mm. violence and all these things that are coded as heterosexual. Mm. So I, I, I got uncomfortable with it. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, come on, like. Yeah, but he, he's really a modern guy in in most i mean he's he's the most modern character there is in the show so he's his values are much closer to to us now and he's comfortable with the arts and he's comfortable with all this other stuff that's not a viking so it's kind of that's the approach to it you know that's sort of what what makes him so ineffectual in that world yeah, yeah. is are the same things that would have that would make him a the oh, like one of the only characters you might actually want to hang out with in real life yes, in the 21st exactly, century. Yeah. yeah. We talked about Holmgang, the mm. uh the the Viking the Viking law that if you uh defeated someone in combat you were entitled to their in this ritual combat you were entitled to their lands and family and so mm. on and so forth everything they had. Were there other things that you learned about Viking culture and uh, the way and Viking law that led directly to the show in the way that that did. Yeah, the at the stoop probably. Uh, you remember the first scene in season one where the uh, old uh, guys, those who are past forty, have to jump from a cliff. Old bod, maybe you want to go next. I'm thinking, what's the worst thing that could happen to me if I don't do the at the stoop? I mean. <laughs> What's worse than being crushed? I, I don't know. I was just I was just ordered to take you up here. I mean, you're supposed to do the jump and, and, and spare your families the burdening that is supporting you in your old age. Yeah, but I'm only 47. It's I'm, I mean, it's not that old. I'm just going to skip the whole thing. OK. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to jump either. This is not my kind of thing. Anyone else? Want to jump? <coughs> I mean, come on, fellas. I mean, it's just not very tempting. OK, I mean, I'm just a slave. I can't make you do anything you don't want to do. But right. uh, could, you, could you just please stay away from Nordheim so that people don't understand that you didn't do that? Just do. Of course, no, no problem. No. That's yeah. uh, you know based on uh, that's based on yeah. the on the sagas for they they're not quite sure what it meant but uh, they they have found like uh, there's mountain cliffs there where you where they threw off unwanted babies or uh, you know it was it's kind of a, like a thing at the stoop but which what it translates to is really to to get rid of the burdens of of. Uh, <laughs> Of of the society and 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 in Viking culture, the old people wanted to die in battle, 
and uh, the worst thing you could do was to to die uh, which is pretty funny to die uh, in your bed with your family around you that was like then you go straight down <laughs> so so the so the like the number two thing to do is if you can't die in battle is to jump off a cliff for your for your friends <laughs> When I uh, asked on Twitter what I should ask you guys, a fan of your show said, uh, can you ask them about blacksmithing? It seems like they get most of it pretty close to right. And I'm not going to ask you about blacksmithing specifically. (laughs) We have a lot to say about blacksmithing. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, I wonder when you're making this kind of show and it's this ridiculous, whether you still get the kind of intense nerd feedback uh, about this that you would get if you were, you know, if you were making glory about the American Civil War and everybody's mm-hmm. like, well, he's wearing a, yeah, you know, yeah. he's wearing a set of 72nd regiment yeah. cap. Mm. He should be wearing a 70th mm-hmm. regiment. You know what I mean? Yeah. We got that a lot because uh, we used, uh, or we worked with these Viking clubs the and they're uh, very, <laughs> yeah, the extras uh, and they're not very keen on uh, portraying stuff that was not like they uh, like they think it was a thousand years ago so uh, so there was kind of a battle because you know they didn't use that much leather more uh, linen clothes and yeah. f- colors just supposed to be more colorful than we portray but we wanted to be close to Vikings and Game of Thrones in style because that's what we was we you were aiming to, to for. to look cool and not like yeah. a play you know which is with a with a lot of colors, we wanted to have a, like a tone of the show to be rainy and to be brown and to be dark and to be gritty and dirty and. So and the same with blacksmiths, you know the stuff that we had we had quality control that it had to be look uh, yeah, at yeah. least within a period. I don't yeah. know if it's seven ninety exactly, but between seven hundred and a year thousand, I think yeah. we were. Pretty close, yeah, yeah. Pretty close. And there. also the w- place we filmed, we f- we filmed this on location uh, on a, on an actual Viking farm where they, and we were we weren't allowed to lift a stone in the ground because you find a sword there, because they they like the the excavate uh, every year they are allowed to do another part and it's been a Viking settlement there since since in for fifteen hundred years, so it's a proper Viking place where the archaeologists have built the houses we were using. And on the same ground that's, that's been for 1,500 years. And, you know, so this community that's been doing that with the archaeologists have been using findings to replicate all the things that we used in their houses. So, so I mean, we get a lot of, uh, of uh, thumbs up from people that, because it's accurate in a whole different way than Vikings is. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, do the guys in the Viking clubs love you or hate you? I think it's a lot of love. Yeah, a lot yeah. of love, really. Yeah. So that's uh, kind of surprising, but uh, <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also because yeah. to, to the, 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 the beautiful thing about our extras, which has really added everything to the show, because it's, uh, I mean, they know how to color clothing. They know how to carve. They know how to uh, fix skins on animals. And so you could just put them to do stuff in the background of every scene, and they would do an authentic, Thing. And they're not just extras walking around waiting for a hand signal to walk the other way again. You know, they had, they had like we made a village. They have their job in the village. Just do your stuff, and and our actors will do their stuff. And you know, so that helped for the whole like experience of a of a Viking town. Really. Why did you guys kill so many of your characters? Because <laughs> we can. Yeah, because <laughs> we can. No, I mean, it's all about the story. This, I mean, the, the story is the boss. And if that works better for the story, that's what's going to happen. And one of the characters was because he uh, was committed to other projects. So <laughs> so he had to be a speed through the mouth. But uh, except from that, it was uh, because of the story. I mean, we, the way. we hang out with a lot of the actors, our friends of us. And we're like with the Arvid, which is his name is uh, Jögge. And we're like constantly on them with like, if you don't do this for us, we're gonna, you're gonna die in the first scene. Of the, <laughs> sorry. So we're like pushing them and uh, screwing with them. And like you're threatening. arguing about who's yeah. gonna bring yeah. dip to the party, and you're like, well, yeah. you better yeah, bring yeah. the dip because yeah. you're gonna fall in the like the the, the trap. We're gonna yeah. make a huge trap the first day, and yeah, then it's a big trap. You, 
Uh, when I was in Northern Europe, a lot of people seemed to be really into tacos. Mm-hmm. True. Um, are tacos very popular in Norway? <laughs> yes. They are. They call it Taco Friday because everyone eats tacos on Friday night. With the family, with the family. in front of the TV. It's a, it's a thing. <laughs> what is a taco in... We have Taco Tuesdays here in the United oh. States. Oh, you do? Because they both start with tea. Of course. Oh. Um, <laughs> Makes sense. But uh, what is constitutes a taco in Norway? It's not what I mean. It's a bit like you have a taco here, but it's just more boring. Probably it's just like more Norwegian take on it. It's, you wouldn't impress a, a Mexican person with our yeah. tacos at all. Tacos it's didn't a, come to Norway until nineteen ninety one or something. Yeah. So it's a pretty along with rollerblades. <laughs> yeah. yeah, along with rollerblades <laughs> yeah. and skateboard was illegal. <laughs> yeah. In yeah, the nineties. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's the only country in the world or something where it was not allowed to own a skateboard. No. You had to smuggle them through Sweden to get a skateboard. <laughs> yeah. Wow, like yeah. like getting Levi's in Soviet Russia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, when we were kids, we, my mother you worked for SIS, so she was flying over and brought back skateboards, and I was like, <laughs> you were handing, handing, skateboard. handing, selling skateboards to my friends it was yeah. crazy, and they were like like Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's a, that is that is truly amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was so great to get to talk to you. And thank so, you for having I've, us. I've really loved watching the show. Thank you. Thanks that means for having a lot. Us. Thank you. Jonas Torgerson and John Ivor Helgaker. Their show Norseman is absolutely one of the brutalest things I have ever laughed uproariously at. You can watch seasons one and two right now on Netflix. We've come to the end of another episode of Bullseye. Bullseye is recorded at MaximumFun.org World Headquarters, overlooking MacArthur Park in beautiful Los Angeles, California, where we had swarms of painted lady butterflies outside of our window this week. It was a really remarkable sight. The show is produced by Speaking Into Microphones. Our producer is Kevin Ferguson. Jesus Ambrosio is our associate producer. We have help from Casey O'Brien. Our new production fellow is Jordan Cowling. Thank you, Jordan. Our interstitial music is by DJ W, a.k.a. Dan Wally. Our thanks to him for making that music for us. Our theme song is called Huddle Formation. It's by the band The Go Team. They and their label Memphis Industries were nice enough to let us use that. Our thanks to them, of course. You should go support that great band. And before you go, I have been making this show for nigh on two decades. Coming up on two decades. And almost every episode we've ever made is on our website at MaximumFun.org. You can also find us on YouTube where these interviews that you heard today and almost all of our interviews for the past few years are up and easily shareable and searchable. Just... Search for Bullseye with Jesse Thorne on YouTube. We're also on Facebook and Twitter at Bullseye and Facebook.com slash Bullseye with Jesse Thorne. I guess that's about it. Just remember, all great radio hosts have a signature sign-off. Bullseye with Jesse Thorne is a production of MaximumFun.org and is distributed by NPR.